Hi, and welcome back. Um, David McManus from the Cardiovascular Digital Health Journal here with Gary Shapiro, uh, President and CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, the largest association of its kind, including technology uh, corporations, um, over 2,000 American technology corporations, in fact, um, and the author of uh, several best-selling books, including uh, Ninja Future, Secrets to Success in the New World of Innovation. Now, um, Mr. Shapiro has talked to us uh, uh, previously about um, the Consumer Technology Association, um, uh, its uh, impact in several areas, including establishing standards, uh, including uh, raising the bar of quality for uh, technology as it's used in healthcare. Um, and, uh, and so I wanna kick off by asking you, uh, Gary, and thank you again for joining us, um, uh, a little bit about how, let's turn the lens on professional societies of healthcare providers. What can we do to work better with con the Consumer Technology Association um, what, and technology corporations for that matter to um, develop technologies that have meaningful value to our patients uh, who are, are not just uh, users, but uh, you know, our passion uh, are to make them well. So how do we um, leverage our professional organizations or, or other organizations to, uh, to work effectively with you? Well, actually, the um, Heart Rhythm Society has done a phenomenal job of actually working with us. In fact, we prepared a joint document together, um, Guidance for Wearable Health Solutions, uh, in January. And it talks about um, some of the issues, uh, some of the opportunities in terms of consumer, uh, what consumers want to see. And they want to see a lot involving the heart. They want to see blood pressure. Uh, obviously, heart rate has been there for a while. Um, of course, Gary, it's the most important organ. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it, of course. Uh, that, so, so we're doing a good job. Um, I think there's always opportunities to work closer together. Uh, we, I think there's a, a symbiotic relationship here, and that we both care. We want to do well, good at our jobs, and we want to do better for society. There are things coming up which are rather important um, in the next Congress. There'll be a focus on infrastructure. I think we as an organization, since we're concerned about the debt, never ask for money for ourselves, but I think we're going to be focusing on the importance of broadband infrastructure because COVID has certainly taught us that there's, there's two issues with broadband is if you don't have broadband, you don't have access to what you need for your kids for education, and you certainly won't have access to the, some of the ability to have the telemedicine and, and other opportunities that these devices have and, and it's the it's the haves and the haves nots. Uh, some of it is rural, and we've been advocating for years a solution that Microsoft has talked about of using unused broadcast spectrum. Some of it is cost, frankly. And one of the ideas that's being kicked around is to have a lower cost broadband service if it's based around um, medicine and healthcare, because the needs are so great. I mean, if you think about it, uh, our research actually showed that in the last 12 months of the houses with broadband. 41% of them um, use telehealth services in the, just wow. the last 12 months. That's, that's incredible. So telehealth has clearly exploded because of the last several months of the COVID. Um, and it's, but it will keep growing because consumers are saying, this is what we want. The ratings are off the roof for it. Everyone seems happy. The insurance companies are happy. The consumers are happy. Obviously, you know, the insurance companies are concerned a little bit about fraud and that's, and they should be, but that's not the biggest issue right now. The biggest mm -hmm. issue is availability of broadband. And I think as a society, we have to focus on that. You know, a hundred years ago it was the availability of electricity and maybe a hundred years before that it was plumbing and water. Now it's broadband, and that's, that is a real issue that I think we can work together on making sure our public officials, and it's not a partisan issue, this is bipartisan, um, it's something we can work on together as well. And that and their standards. Anyone who goes to our website at cta.tech can see what we do. We're open for participation. Standards groups are pretty open for participation. We have all sorts of groups from the AARP to various medical groups to insurance companies. We made the decision to go beyond ourselves and just partner, partner, partner. We have a couple of groups focusing at the uh, disparity in healthcare between the haves and have nots, uh, between those that are um, at, uh, minority groups and others. We've seen the disparities now, and we're trying to plan also a group focusing for the next pandemic, how technology can help, uh, next healthcare emergency. So we're looking at many different things, and if people want to plug in, they can. In terms of approaching companies, I think companies are interested in listening and talking. They want good ideas. They want to work with doctors. I've noticed even my 
high school uh, valedictorian friend who attended our CES, our trade show a few years ago. All of a sudden now he's He's launched a, his own technology company. He's consulting with companies in healthcare. There's uh, opportunities for healthcare professionals if you're interested in this, and if you're watching this or reading this, the journal, you certainly are interested. Creativity is, is something that, that the best companies realize comes from so many different sources, and we need practicing doctors, we need academics, we need researchers. I'm not saying they're gonna throw money at you or welcome ideas, but a quick research could show you, you know, how you can contact them, how you can contact the chief medical officer and give them your ideas. So it's, this is, uh, we succeed as a nation in innovation, I think, because we're open to new ideas. We're open to the diversity. We don't just hire people that look like ourselves. And that's diversity is so important in terms of our success and innovation. Uh, so a lot of my books and writings are about innovation. And I am a big believer that good ideas come from anywhere. Wow. So uh, first of all, thank you for directly and comprehensively answering that tough question. Um, what one uh, follow up I have to you in terms of uh, innovation um, uh, is, do you, do you foresee as consumer devices uh, generate data um, on heart rate and on oxygen saturation and respiration and sleep, there, there's just an overwhelming uh, amount of data that's coming in and or will come in to uh, health systems who right now um, don't really have outside of a few examples and infra you mentioned infrastructure, broadband infrastructure. Within the healthcare system, do you foresee a need to grow infrastructure, both human and capital for them to be able to handle um, data from consumer wearables uh, in order to meaningfully use it at the population or individual level? There, there are two things that will occur in that field. That's a great question. Um, there'll be various software companies and software services or service uh, software as a service, which will develop, which will provide uh, dashboards, which will allow you to have information. Obviously, there's already um, algorithms developing uh, thresholds for alerting uh, your physician or, or alerting the patient himself that they should alert their physician. There's ways of dealing with this data. We're still in, in the very early phases of this but it's going to get better and better and people will see the opportunity for taking all this information and, and collapsing it as they've done in other areas of medicine. Um, in terms of the training, I understand that this is an issue even for uh, younger uh, doctors are being trained that medical schools are looking at how to train for this It's one of the big issues. Um, to me, it's, it's kind of up there um, with uh, bedside matter and other things like that. It's not that difficult. We all are looking at data, whether it's stock tables or and especially doctors with their, their necessary science background. They know how to read reports, do statistical analysis, do studies. This is not that, that different. In fact, I'd say it's easier. But it may not be natural for some people. It may be more like a bedside manner thing where some it's not really taught that well in, in most medical schools. Uh, and it's something where, you know, as someone said, do you want a doctor that's really proficient or do you want a doctor with a good bedside manner? You know, everyone really wants both. But this is the kind of thing we're looking at the data. There will be people, it may be that younger people are more facile with it, but um, it's definitely out there. People are using these devices as consumers. They're figuring themselves. They're looking at their sleep. They're looking at their heart rate. They're comparing with norms. A number of the companies themselves are looking at providing services that help you, you step up, if you will. You pay more for a month to get more information, more data, more analysis, more help, maybe even have people standing by to guide you to places. So this will develop in the free market, I'm pretty convinced. Um, and there might be some missteps along the way where people miss something. I and mean, we were concerned for years about what happens if your broadband signal goes down during, during a surgery or during important information. We will get through it. We all know where we want to go with this. We know we're going to get there. We're, we're going to get to healthier people, better use of doctor's time, um, especially with a limited number of doctors. And, and basically keeping people out of hospitals that shouldn't be there or should mm -hmm. never get there. And we're seeing some of this uh, enhanced quickly because of COVID. It's interesting, the hospital mix of people who go into emergency rooms, that, that we'll spend a lot of time figuring what that really means out about uh, all the people who didn't have, didn't go in for the heart attacks that they weren't having anyhow, I've heard. I'm, I'm probably stepping into an area, your area that I no, should. Oh, no, I think you're spot on, Gary. So, so there, there's times to analyze some of these things and, and the role of the devices and how they could get better, but this is a, a process. and the end result will be there and will always be keep getting better, but it'll never be perfect. I guess that's my best answer there. But, but in terms of plugging in, pick up the phone, send an email, call, just do it. Well, uh, Gary, what a, what a great way of um, 
of sort of finishing the, the three uh, segments together here that covered everything from uh, what the Consumer Technology Association is doing in healthcare, how it's working with professional societies, your vision for the future, what's going on and some examples of, of how consumer technologies are being used today. Um, we've interwoven your, uh, ex your wife's experiences in the clinic, uh, your experiences overseeing the largest uh, uh, group uh, of technology uh, corporations uh, around. Um, what a segment. So first of all, a heartfelt thanks for coming on for, you know, we feel as a new journal, uh, just launching very privileged to be able to get somebody of your stature on uh, to talk to us and our readers and contributors. So we really appreciate the vote of confidence in us and the support um, and, and really appreciate your thoughts more importantly. So again, on behalf of the Cardiovascular Digital Health Journal, thank you, Gary, and um, really hope that we get to talk to you again and, and we will work with you uh, on an ongoing basis. So uh, really appreciate your time. Well, thank you for being a pioneer and focusing on such an important area. I mean, history will prove that this is the, the starting point for going forward and literally changing healthcare. So thank you for focusing on it.